Today I'm going to be doing a bit of kitchen magic. I'm going to be making a chocolate cake with just two ingredients and no, one of the ingredients isn't a cake mix or anything like that. This is legitimately two ingredients and you will never believe that this actually works but it really does. Let's make a beautiful two ingredient chocolate cake on the One Pot Chef. The first of our two ingredients is, of course, chocolate. We're making a chocolate cake. I'm using 300 grams of semi-sweet dark chocolate. I'm using semi-sweet dark chocolate because I find milk chocolate tends to be a little too sweet with recipes like this. I find having that little bit of extra cocoa to it really does make this taste so much nicer and so much richer but you're welcome to use milk chocolate if you prefer. Now all we need to do is melt this chocolate. I find the microwave version much easier to do. So you just pop this into a microwave safe dish and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, give it a stir, put it in for another 30 seconds, give it a stir and just keep repeating that until the chocolate is melted and smooth. And our chocolate is lovely and melted. You see how smooth that is? Absolutely perfect. So we're just going to set our chocolate aside for a few minutes to cool while we work on our other ingredient. Our other ingredient is eggs, four eggs. Now I know you're thinking, hang on a minute, chocolate and eggs, how does this turn into a cake? Well, I shall show you. First things first, we need to separate the eggs. So I've got the egg whites in a big bowl and I've got the egg yolks in a small bowl, which we're gonna set aside because we don't need them right this second. I accidentally broke a couple of the yolks, but it doesn't matter for this recipe. And all we need to do is beat up our egg whites until they're nice soft peaks. And that's looking good. You see the nice soft peaks there and it's increased in volume, perfect. Once our chocolate has cooled a bit, we're gonna start by adding in our egg yolks. We're gonna add one yolk at a time or a little bit at a time. Get in there. Oh, baby. <laughs> and we're just going to carefully stir that together, then add the next yolk in and just keep going until all the yolks have been added. You'll see the chocolate mixture has thickened up a fair amount. That's perfectly fine. Next, we're going to add in our egg white mixture. And all we're going to do is just add a third of it in and we're going to fold that in carefully. We don't want to beat it and lose all the air in the egg whites. Just slowly scrape from the bottom, put over the top until it's integrated and then add another third of the egg white in. It's tempting to rush and just give this a damn good beating, but the reality is you need to do it nice and slow. So we've got a nice, soft, gentle batter and we don't lose any of the air from the egg whites because that's where the majority of the lift for this comes from because there's no baking powder or baking soda or any kind of raising agent added to this. It's just the chocolate and the eggs. And that's it. Look, it's actually cake batter. You wouldn't believe this is just chocolate and eggs, but it looks like a real cake batter. So let's get bacon. I've got a standard cake pan here, which I have just lightly greased with a little bit of spray on oil. And I've lined the base with a bit of baking paper just to make sure the cake doesn't stick. And we're just going to pour our batter in. And our two ingredient chocolate cake is ready to go into the oven. Preheated oven 170 degrees Celsius, 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Half an hour is all you need and we're going to have a beautiful cake. While our cake is in the oven, I thought I'd take this opportunity to remind you to check out my social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Links in the video description underneath this video on YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also click that little notification bell next to the subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. And our chocolate cake is fresh out of the oven. You'll see it has risen up a bit. Now we're going to let this stand in the tin on the counter for about 10 to 15 minutes, allow it to cool, in which time it's going to drop down a little bit. Don't panic, that's perfectly normal. To serve, all we need to do is take a knife and just 
carefully run it around the outside edge just to make sure it's free from the tin. Then simply place our serving plate over the top and give it a gentle flip and carefully lift the tin. And you can see our paper there, we can just take that off. Carefully, carefully, that's it. Lovely. Now how you choose to serve this is entirely up to you. You could allow this to cool completely and put some frosting on top. You could drizzle a little sauce over the top, maybe some chocolate or raspberry sauce. I'm going for a very basic flourish. I'm just putting a little bit of icing sugar over the top. And here we have our completed two ingredient chocolate cake looking absolutely stunning. It is thick and dense and moist and gorgeous and I cannot wait to dive in and have a taste. It's incredible. It's so hard to believe that this is actually just chocolate and eggs. There's no flour or anything like that, but it's got crumbs. It looks like cake. It feels like cake. And let's see if it tastes like cake. Mm. Oh my God. Mmm. <laughs> You'd almost expect it to taste like a giant chocolate omelette, but that is like thick chocolate mud cake. It's dense, but it's got that crumminess to it. There's, and you can literally see on the plate there are crumbs. It's absolutely amazing. It's hard to believe that there's no flour in it because it has such a floury cake-like consistency. Absolutely stunning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later. Because there's no flour in this, this is technically gluten free, but also make sure you check the chocolate beforehand to make sure it is gluten free because you don't want to accidentally kill your gluten intolerant friends. Um, but that is absolutely phenomenal. You would never believe that that has no flour in it. If you wanted to go for something really more over the top, you could make two of these, allow them to cool completely, and then sandwich them together as a layer cake. You could put some frosting between the two layers or whipped cream or something like that. Oh, absolutely astonishing. <laughs>